Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best Kurt Russell movie. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hey, everybody. This is Hal. And Mark. And you're listening to this episode during the 2024 Max Fun Drive. That is the time where we celebrate all things Max Fun, including all of the people whose membership helps make this show possible. We're also inviting new people into the fold to become members at MaximumFun.org slash join. Just $5 a month or more is going to get you a lot of wonderful stuff. That's right. We'll tell you all about the wonderful stuff a little later in the episode. But for right now, just remember MaximumFun.org slash join to become a member or upgrade or boost and tick that box for we got this with mark and hal and to you we say thank you thank you thank you enjoy this episode <laughs> best uh could russell wait wait gabe tango tango zib dicks oh my gosh best could russell movie best could russell movie but that was almost it Charles Bronson. Bronson-esque. I don't know if, yeah, it, yeah, it, sound, it did sound Bronson-esque. very Charles Bronson esque. That was Jack Palance, though. Yeah, that was Jack Palance from the great Kurt Russell film Tango and Cash. Which, yeah. Uh, despite, now this is first of all. Let me. Uh, this is the biggest time of year, obviously, for all the shows on the network. It's Max Fun Drive. And welcome to Max Fun Drive, everybody. Yeah, welcome to Max Fun Drive. Uh, week two. Here's the thing. All right. Mm-hmm. We want to do our biggest episodes, but also we want to hang out with our buddies on the network. And when Adam Pranica emails you and is like, best Kurt Russell movie, is this a thing? And (laughs) one of your hosts is not only a huge Kurt Russell fan, but has his own Kurt Russell film rating system, which I'll get into in a second. Yeah. You say, yes, we'll do that. You will come on and do it. You're like, are you sure there's enough there for an episode? And I said, (laughs) I promise. I promise there is. It was not originally best Kurt Russell movie. There were two additional words on the end of this email chain. Oh, it was best Kurt Russell movie by hair. Yeah. So the oh, original idea, proposition. oh, the original proposition was to oh, just geez. go best Kurt Russell movie by the performance of his hair. That's in that right. Movie. Oh, yeah. I got so honestly, Adam, I went to a fugue state when I saw best mm-hmm. Kurt Russell movie and lost everything after it and got you really did. But let's we'll do a twofer. I was doing a rewatch of the thing that I tend to do like once every year or so. And I was like, is yeah. this the best hair I've ever seen in any movie ever? It's, it's definitely glorious. the best Santa Claus hair ever. Yeah. The Santa yeah. Claus hair that he's rocking in the Christmas Chronicles, which yeah. is way better than the mullet that uh Tim Allen is rocking in the Santa Claus. For those who we've not since we did just kind of jump right in and didn't properly introduce Welcome to We Got This with Mark and Hal. It's Max Fun Drive. This is Max Fun Superstar Adam Pranica is joining us for this episode. I just Adam, how the heck the are you? Before being introduced. You did. <laughs> yeah. You jumped right. You just poked your head through that rainbow curtain that uh, Johnny Carson had. But thank you for being here. This is delightful. How's your fun drive going so far? It's great. Great success. Uh, Good. Mash hit. Tons of fun. (laughs) It's amazing that you've broken all those membership records already. I know. I know. It's, It's almost embarrassing. How good we're doing. <laughs> well, but, uh, unless- embarrassment is a, is a great big part of our show. Sure. You know, obviously we're asking for support during Max Fun Drive, but not only for our show, but both Greatest Trek and Greatest Generation deserve overwhelming support for you. Last time we had you here, we were talking about starships from the Star Trek universe, mm-hmm. but now we get to talk about something non-Star, like you get to shed, you get to show everybody what's going on outside of Star Trek. Like uh, all, it's such the, a relief. all the heat you bring. <laughs> I I love uh, getting out of my lane a little bit. And yeah. really, when you look at us, who better to uh, grade hair? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take it. I'm going to start the show back to grading these films on hair, Hal. Yeah. 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 Uh, just great heads of hair on all of us. Oh, fantastic. High five, yeah. guys. I wear this hat because I don't want to embarrass other people. It's fair. Uh, I understand. Oh, look, if we're going to talk about hair, let's we'll, let's do the hair. We'll get the hat. First of all, the thing is a great choice. <laughs> I also, are we including facial hair? Yeah. So Wyatt Earp is up there. 
Wyatt Earp is up there, but if you're going to go Wyatt Earp and put it on crack, you got to go with Bone Tomahawk because he's got like oh, a full bushy mustache over yeah. the beard and the flowing lot. Like that's like like he can't control the hair coming out. It's of like him. he pulled a hold my beer on Jeff Bridges in True Grit for mm-hmm. the look that he decided to have or that hair and makeup decided that he should have. Hold in that my movie. beard. Yeah. Hold my, he hold my bearded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Hal, I am so curious and I know Adam is probably curious as well. Aside from the hair, how in fact does your Kurt Russell rating system work? It is a three tiered system. I'm so glad you asked. The <laughs> lowest tier is if a movie is Kurtastic. Then if it's better than Kurtastic, it's Russellicious. But if it's peak Kurt Russell, then that's Kurtastically Russellicious. I've been, no joke, using this rating system maybe since high school. And my best friend will ask me if a Kurt Russell movie comes out. Is it Kurtastic? Is it Russellicious? Like, how is this? We discuss where it sits on the scale. You've provided us with a list of your favorites <laughs> of the Kurt Russell movies. Are all of these movies Kurtastically Russellicious that you have provided in this list of eight? Because I have some yeah. that are not on your list that I Good. would love to. Good. Talk about that. They may either be one of those two. They may not be both of them. This, We're looking yeah. for a movie that's you both. You just keep in a wallet or something, Hal, like at all <laughs> times, like were your body to be found. <laughs> I don't it's... directly identify your remains based on the list yeah. of it that you have. Do you need a I dental a... print? No, we don't need a dental no. print. He has no, this tiny are... Lisa Frank notebook that he's been writing down the names of Russell, <laughs> Russell or Kurt Russell. I almost said Kurt Russell Crow. There's a good yeah. uh, Wheel of Fortune before and after for you. You know, sure. the guy who works in the morgue is really going to appreciate the levity of like, you know, we really loved Hal and you're going to get a kick out of this doc. Like he's got uh. something in his wallet that you're <laughs> really going to appreciate. It's going to be like Twin Peaks. Somebody will pull a piece of paper out from under my fingernail that will just have a tequila sunrise written on it mm-hmm. and nothing or, else. Or they will pull a piece of paper out of Walt Disney's hand immediately after his death. And the only two <laughs> words he has written on that piece of paper are, and this is true, yes. Kurt Russell, which That's is right. a bonkers story. For those who don't know, the last thing that Walt Disney ever wrote was just the words Kurt Russell on a piece of paper. Wow. Isn't that wild? What an honor. <laughs> what, a, what a threat also yeah. like what does it mean <laughs> it is either an honor or a threat that's like yeah. uh that's like kendall royd like does the underline right. go under or through the name like <laughs> yeah was uh-huh. his was his final form to inherit the disney properties and right you know with all the power that walt disney wielded it might have been a shopping list hmm he was just purchasing one Kurt Russell, which he did do for a full decade. Kurt Russell had a 10 year contract at Disney. Did, uh, the computer wore shoes or any of those 1970s teen Kurt no. Russell movies make the list? You don't think? Even as someone who loves primates, I couldn't pick the barefoot executive either, which <laughs> has a chimpanzee on the cover. If there's any oh. movie that was made for me specifically, it would be that one. But no, none of his early. What's weird is like that contract. A lot mm-hmm. of those movies he made in like the mid to late sixties, Walt was already like Walt was not alive for much of Kurt Russell's contract, but I think yeah. he knew that that was someone who was going to be a, like you can tell there's some like child actors where you can tell they're really good at the work, so they're going to have a long career. Mm-hmm. No matter they're jobbers, what. yeah, they're jobbers. They're going to make it through. They're they're in it to win it, and he definitely was one. Of, you could tell he was a star at a young yeah. age, and then his career is like crazy. What is like his career definitely fits into buckets. I'm just going to talk about Kurt Russell for 45 minutes. Sure. Uh, but but he's done like a really wide variety of different types of movies, which is fascinating to me. It's so fun. And I got to say, for a Nepo baby, the apple didn't fall far from the tree because a uh, talented parent, talented mm. performer and talented Quiet. kid. Yeah. Yeah. His son is also uh, his son is also talented. But his father was a star before uh, Kurt Russell was a star. And was promoting a baseball team, which wasn't that how Kurt Russell wound up playing minor league ball up in Oregon. Did you watch that documentary he did? That was really good. The Battered Bastards of Baseball? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have not seen it yet, but I'm dying to check out that story. Probably not going to make the hair list for (laughs) us. Not for his voiceover. Yeah. The problem is, yeah, his, uh, yeah, and his voiceover jobs aren't going to make the hair list either. I don't think Fox and the Hound is going to be high. No. On the Kurt Russell hair list. Though it's a, no. it's a good movie. Yeah. Oh, so, 
<laughs> so what movies let's just start with some heavy hitters okay. Al. what is kurtastically russellicious well i'm gonna veer off of the list for one moment and mention one of my favorite movies of all time which mm-hmm. is kurtastically russellicious by my measurement but mm. I recognize, you know, there are things that we love because they hit us at the right age or the right time and they just stick with us forever. And mm. you come to the point where you go, OK, I love this. This does not mean it's good. Mm. But, I, you know, I can love what I love. Other people don't have to love it. And that's Tango and Cash. I love Tango and Cash. It's ridiculously stupid. It's a great action movie, though. It's a great. It's really is it late fun. 80s or early 90s? 88. 88. 88. Yeah. You know, hearing you describe that. You know, yeah. the, like your relationship with that movie, Hal, makes mm-hmm. me think that, that it's a Fritos movie. And what I mean by that is like, <laughs> I think in the late 80s, early 90s, the Fritos corn chips mm-hmm. had, uh-huh. a, had a commercial jingle that went like, I know what I like. I like Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how you describe Tango and Cash. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Fritos oh, that's movie. great. Adam, do you have an indulgent Kurt Russell movie that you know may not be the best movie, but is... Uh... I do. I don't know if your parents were like this with you, but it's weird. Like, my parents were very overprotective about the sort of films that I was permitted to see. But mm-hmm. for some reason, Overboard was one of my first movie memories. Yeah. Mm. And, like, going back and, and, like, scrutinizing that story and all that happened, like, kind of a yeah. weird impression to imprint on a child. Sure. Yeah. It's that movie a hundred times yeah. when I was like eight years old. And uh, <laughs> I feel like I saw that when I was about that age, too. I haven't seen it in probably 15 years. I have no idea if it holds up. I can't imagine nope. it does. No, you, what you're <laughs> watching when you're watching Overboard is a very charming crime. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, look, I think 100% a lot of, of films crime. of the 80s are like that. Yeah. You're just watching a very the ex- the charming execution of a crime. Yeah, there, there's a compartmentalization to it, though, because I've seen it probably in the last five years. I still mm-hmm. enjoy it. Kurt Russell has so much riz, though. He's got, he like, does have some riz. riz. Crazy and riz he's, on that he's, guy. He's with his lifelong partner, or at yeah. least since 1984. At that point, huh? they'd been together, uh, what, three years? Three, four? Or no, 82, I think, was when they got together. Something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they you knew that they loved one another and that they were relishing work. Like they were enjoying working together and you yeah. can tell when someone's really enjoying working on something. So mm-hmm. there is like a fun to it from that. And it dangerously probably takes you away. It sort of, uh, guides you away from how terrible this is. Mm-hmm. Like if it was, yeah. what was it? Passengers? Is that the one with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence where yeah. they're, where they're yeah. on the ship? Like, this could easily be like a passenger's type of movie, but it's lighthearted. It's got a killer cast. It's a Frank Marshall film, isn't it? Didn't mm. he direct it? Uh, Overboard? Right. Yeah. I don't know. It has the vibe. It has sort of a Gary Marshall. Sorry. It has a Gary, Gary Marshall Mar- kind of vibe yeah. to it. If it is not a Gary Marshall film. And it's a Gary Marshall. And Mar- in it. Yeah, there you it's go. It's a Gary Marshall joint, which is how Gary, Gary Marshall put it. <laughs> That's how he yeah. labels all of his That's movies. That's how he'd always say it. Yeah. 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 I had that on my list. I don't think it's the best one, but it is fantastically russellicious because it's a great like the fact that they're able to take such a terrible premise Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. somehow lose you in the charm of them and you realize going through like oh she is meant to be like the and the cast is great edward herman is great and uh catherine helmand Mm -hmm. but it's a stacked cast they carry the movie really well but it's a time you know like like Mm -hmm. the not dangerous danger of so many of the films of that era Mm-hmm. And, and Overboard is a great example of that. Yes. Yes. So it's a great, yeah, I think it is a good, it is a guilty pleasure, literally because he's guilty of crimes. Yeah. So if you enjoy it. But you're, Mark, you're suggesting that I shouldn't rewatch it? Like, uh, would, maybe let that, it, that childhood let it, memory? yeah, let it stay in your childhood as a really fun romp that you remember. Yeah. Okay. I would argue. And not a dude taking advantage of a person with a physical Amnesia. trauma. And okay. a lot of money. Not a Fritos movie. Got yeah, it. Not a Fritos movie. It's not. But I would actually suggest you do rewatch it just to see. Because I don't think, that, you know, there are movies you like as a kid. Like, I loved Mel Gibson when I was a kid. And that turned mm-hmm. out to be, I didn't think at my bar mitzvah that I would ever be like, Mel Gibson doesn't like me. But here we are. Yeah. The, the relationship <laughs> I had with those movies when I was a kid is still there. Right. It's just, it's colored differently by being an adult. I can still watch mm-hmm. movies of his. But it's certainly a little different. This, at least, you know, they're not horrendous people. It's just the premise isn't 
very good. And they somehow managed to skirt the line of he never takes advantage of her physically. Like, there's no... Yeah. His goal is yeah. not to make her... His goal is to make her work off the cost of his tools. Right. Not yeah. to do anything illicit. And then they happen to fall in love. And it's a very sweet thing at the end. Yeah. Even though it's very weird. Like, why would you... Why would you suddenly decide, yeah, I do want to be with this guy? Oh. I mean, it's a hmm. film about class, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a class it's war. war. It, yeah. I, I mean, it is... If you don't look too deep into other stuff, if you want to look at it as a class war movie, great. Yeah. I would like to throw out one that is Mm. a guilty pleasure of mine. That is, it is not Kurt Russell playing a character committing a crime for the whole movie. It's Kurt Russell playing a character who is, uh, he does do some, uh, he does a little bit of crime, but then things go way too far and he becomes the hero that is going to save us. From Kevin Costner's other Elvis in 3,000 Miles to Graceland. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a perfect movie for you. It is. 3,000 Miles to Graceland is, for those who don't know, it's Elvis impersonators doing a heist. Mm-hmm. And there's there's like a whole cross-country driving element. There's Kevin Costner plays the ultimate villain. Kurt Russell is the hero of it, who is also part of his crime squad. And the movie ends with, it's sort of that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, we've got you surrounded, so go out in a blaze of glory. This is not Kurt Russell, which might take it out of contention. Not that it necessarily was in contention, but Kevin Costner with all of the lasers from all of the cops that have surrounded him. In the smoke, you see all these red lasers on him and him just sort of standing in a circle and swaying his hips while Elvis's version of My Way plays. (laughs) <laughs> and it's one of the most delightfully over the top <laughs> cinema moments ever. But while we're talking about Russell Crowe, I'm not Russell Crowe. I keep, I'm going to keep doing Kurt Russell that. Crow? Kurt Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. While we are talking about Kurt Russell playing Elvis, how about when he played Elvis two years after Elvis died mm-hmm. in the movie Elvis the movie? His yes. Elvis impression in that movie is pitch perfect. And yet he didn't have any problem losing the affected voice. After. Yeah. Take that, Austin Butler. You don't yeah. have to get that weird <laughs> dude. Take it for, it's called acting. Yeah, <laughs> my dear boy. My dear boy. Well, he also, like, it's weird. Kurt Russell plays an Elvis impersonator mm-hmm. who is a thief. Who crimes. And roll back. He plays Elvis. Then roll back to, I think, his first ever movie. He is yeah. in an Elvis movie. Yeah. So he's done, like, the full gamut of Elvis work that you could possibly do. And a great uncredited great part in an Elvis movie, uh, Elvis pays him to kick him in the shin so he can go out on a date with a nurse. And then Kurt Russell runs into Elvis and the nurse later on as they're on their date and asks him if he can kick him in the shin again for money. Sure. Look, as far as like early career, like bit parts go. Yeah. That's a great early career bit part. Do we want to jump into some of these? Do you want to give us what's on your list, Hal? Sure, sure. I forgot. I had eight movies. It's actually nine movies. Yeah. I had it as eight, and then I forgot to add one. Here are the movies that I had listed. I'll exclude Overboard, because we've already talked about it. Mm-hmm. These, I think, are Kurt Russell's best movies. I'm not counting movies in which he has, like, he is the narrator of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and and briefly mm-hmm. appears as the stunt coordinator mm-hmm. who whose wife gets uh, Brad Pitt fired because he beats up Bruce Lee in a very weird scene. So we won't count that. But here, here's what I have. I have The Christmas Chronicles. I have Death Proof. I have Escape from New York, Executive Decision, Breakdown, Miracle, and The Thing, and Tombstone. Those are the ones I have that for me – If or oh, and Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, my gosh. How that did you not effort. put – I was yeah. kind of shocked by, by the I last – I had it in my wish. head. I had it in my head. And You're just that. going Escape from New York, not Escape from L.A. No, Escape from L.A. is vastly in – Inferior, although fun, just the same. Yeah. Can I give you a cinema autobiographical fact about me? Is that I Please. saw Escape from L.A. before seeing Escape from New York. Me too. <laughs> and it baffled me. I, right? I just didn't get it. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, yeah. There's no. I knew like roughly what happened in Escape from New York. Like I knew the idea of it. Mm. But Do then Alien Resurrection like was inspired by the basketball scene in Escape from LA in any way? I think entirely. Yeah. That's what I would say. Well, let's talk about Escape from New York. Let's talk about Snake Plissken. Mm. That's his probably his most iconic character of his adult career. 
he had played one character in a bunch of those Disney movies as a teenager. But uh, what gives Snake Plissken his staying power and his iconic status? Is he it just the iPad? The that, that's what I learned in Escape from L.A. You can shoot the J. Yeah, <laughs> shoot the J. Dude's an athlete. You uh-huh. can cover one of his eyes. He's still in depth perception. No problem. He'll lay up. Yeah, from that is odd. Yeah. yeah. How is he that good at depth perception? <laughs> He's Snake Plissken. Yeah. I think it does kind of embody Russell Crowe. I'm going to keep doing it. I did it again. I need a Russell Crowe jar. I keep saying Russell Crowe instead of Kurt Russell. I think it does embody him, though. That sort of snarky, like he created such a persona with that character of like lovable anti-hero bad boy. It's well, one of those roles where it's really difficult to imagine anyone else playing it. No, no. Well, and that's, I think John Carpenter had to fight to cast him because he was the Disney kid before that. Mm -hmm. So this really, John Carpenter probably defines Kurt Russell's career more than anyone else. He he directed Elvis the movie. He directed Elvis the movie. So that's where they meet. Then he he casts him as Snake Plissken in what is either the greatest B movie that's actually an A movie or just the greatest B movie ever made. Just from premise, just everything Mm -hmm. about it screams B movie. But it's so good because John Carpenter is directing it. He's, He's off of Halloween. And Snake Plissken, he does a lot, like it's a really understated performance. That's the Mm -hmm. thing is like, he's a quiet, that's a quiet, like character Mm -hmm. that he plays extremely well. Then he does the thing with him, follows it up with a great remake of a horror movie, another iconic role for him. But I would say that Big Trouble in Little China is probably, that's probably his most iconic role. And again, John Carpenter. Yeah. Al, I read that like the thing was very poorly received, but it makes me wonder if like, John Carpenter movies in general are impervious to review in a conventional yeah. way. Yeah. Like I was going to ask about that. Are we going by best Kurt Russell performance or is it the best Kurt Russell movie? Because is the like is Miracle a good movie? Yes. You know what I mean? Miracle is an outstanding movie. It's fine of all of the Disney 90s to early 2000s yeah. inspirational sports movies. We're talking about The Rookie. We're talking about Remember the Titans. Mm-hmm. This is far and away the best one. I love Remember the Titans. I watch it at yeah. least once a year because it's Denzel Washington and Will Patton together. I need to Come get on. on that level because all of those, that era of inspirational sports movies, I missed mm-hmm. all of them. I didn't yeah. think oh, me. So I never saw Miracle. So- Miracle, uh, which you probably already know, but for anybody listening who doesn't, is the story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team that mm-hmm. defeats the Soviets, the famous Do You Believe in Miracles call from Al Michaels, which he recreates, I think, for that film. Wow. Uh, and Kurt Russell plays Herb Brooks, who was the coach of that team and figured out how to beat the Russians at their own game and had mm-hmm. played, had been the last guy cut the year of the Olympic, the, I think the last year that they beat the Russians. So he wasn't on that team. Again, like a stoic he adopts a Minnesota accent and <laughs> play like her Brooks is like a serious kind of guy who put his players through hell. And it's again, the great performance, just he anchors the film and it's as charismatic as he is in mm-hmm. movies like overboard. He's the opposite of that in miracle, but I think it is a fantastic performance. It just shows like the range that he has that he can do that and be Jack Burton. Cause they're very, They're very different, not only from one talks a lot, the other never talks, but one of them just, yeah, like personality versus no personality. Yes, Riz and Ed, he can play the full spectrum of Riz, and he does it really well in Miracle. It's worth another watch if you haven't seen it in a while, Mark. All right, I'll give it another chance. Look, I love a good sports movie, and it is a great premise. It's a great hook. It's a great real actual story. I was, I by the way, when I was thinking of Snake Plissken earlier, I was totally confusing Jack Burton and Snake Plissken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jack Burton is, I think, my favorite of his characters. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that movie, that movie is pure insanity. Yes. It's so fun. Big Trouble in Little China. I think Big Trouble in Little China might be my favorite movie on this list. Yeah. Just because I think it's just when you think it's going to go in one direction, they introduce magic and ancient lore into yeah. it. <laughs> and pretty early on, it, but you're like, wait, what is okay? How old were you when you first saw this, Gags? I was probably like, so I saw it when I was a kid, right? It was the first time I saw it. And I kind of didn't remember it. It was one of those, like, it didn't suck me in. And then as an adult, I had a friend whose dog was named Gracie Law. 
<laughs> and she was like, you know, from Big Trouble in Little China. And I was like, you know, it's been a long time since I saw that. She's like, well, we have to watch this. So she invited a bunch of people over. We watched it. And it, I, my mind was blown by this movie that I had not seen. I remembered bits and pieces of it as a child. But to put yeah. this whole thing together into this crazy story and Kim Cattrall, who, by the way, makes the great entrance, introducing her character by rushing into a room and saying, don't worry, everyone, it's just me, Gracie Law, is the best way to make a character entrance ever. And I want to start walking into rooms like that. Don't worry, everyone, <laughs> it's just me, Mark Agliardi. I love that. I Much like Overboard, I was mm -hmm. sat down in front of Big Trouble in Little China, and mm -hmm. this movie scared me. Like, I was seven when I watched it. It scared me the oh, way yeah. Howard the Duck scared me, because yeah. it was sick. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it felt very, like, horror adjacent. It almost. felt like Gozer. It yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. the Gozer yeah. scenes yeah. at the, the magical Great stuff in it felt like the Gozer scenes at the Terrifying. end of Ghostbusters. And yeah. it is, it's scary, but yeah. it's yeah. so fun. Ah, oh, so fun. The first time you watch it, I think you're kind of transfixed by Kurt Russell, by his performance mm -hmm. as Jack Burton, mm -hmm. because it's so good. It's like the perfect extent, you know, the, the best, I think, actor director relationships, the actor becomes an extension of the director. And certainly mm -hmm. that's kind of what's happening here. But when you watch it again, or the next time you watch it, you will realize that he is the sidekick to everyone else. He is the least competent character in that movie outside of it's all in the reflexes. So mm -hmm. he needs everybody around him to do anything. He is the ultimate sidekick, which is a really smart move because otherwise you would watch it now and go like, oh, a white guy is leading a bunch of Asian people in a movie about Asian cult, like that explores Asian culture in a way, mm -hmm. in a very like B-movie way, but it holds up. It holds up extremely well. Your description of him like as as an extension of a director made me think of the rumor about him in Tombstone and that he directed instead of George P. Cosmatos. Like, do yeah. you, have you heard this, Hal? No. I, mean, I don't even know ever, if it's a rumor. Do you think it's true? I think it's true. According okay. to like, according to all the stuff that I've been reading, it was like, it was just that the director said, don't say this while I'm alive. Interesting. And Kurt. And so after he died in 2005, Kurt Russell was like, yeah, I basically directed Tombstone. So interesting. I mean, why? I love a George P. Cosmatos film. Yeah. And, I mean, he's part of the reason that I love Tombstone so much. And it really, it changes my feelings about the film. Yeah. Knowing really? that maybe he wasn't the guy. Well, the first director was this guy named Kevin Jar or Jari. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but he was removed. Sylvester Stallone recommended Cosmatos. Yeah, yeah. From First Blood Part Two. Uh, yeah, together. Exactly. So, yeah, they took all of this footage and Kurt Russell gave Cosmatos a shot list for the movie, which is like, wow. uh, you mentioned, actually wrote when you said the actor director relationship. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to remember that. I'm so glad you brought it up. So I the mean, idea that he turned that performance into director, the last thing I want to deal with is a shot list. Like you can sure. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> take that. <laughs> yeah. It's like the opposite of Marlon Brando refusing to be directed by Frank Oz and calling him <laughs> Miss Piggy. <laughs> i'll tell you what well this is i mean this is huge news for me i'm very excited to hear it because i love tombstone i think it's uh, yeah. oh and he's brilliant really in movie. it i think what would take it out of the running for me is it's much more of a valkyrie like the thing you yeah. remember you certainly remember his scene with billy bob thornton where he smacks him and says you're gonna do something or just mm -hmm. sit there and bleed but it's val kilmer's film 100 yeah. percent again in a killer cast sam elliott bill paxton mm -hmm. michael bean but the best kurt russell movie can't yeah. be the movie where Kurt Russell gave the second best performance in that movie. Yeah. Why don't we take a quick break and we will come back and talk about some more Kurt Russell Crow movies. But first, <laughs> let's tell you a little bit more about uh, the Max Fun Drive. Hey, everybody. This is Hal. And Mark. And you are listening to this episode during the 2024 Max Fun Drive. In fact, this is the last week for the Max Fun Drive, so it is very important you go to MaximumFun.org slash join before the drive ends to get all your cool gifts and support the art and artists whose work you enjoy with a recurring monthly contribution. This is the one time of the year that everybody on the network comes together to invite you to support the show as a member or by boosting or upgrading your existing membership. Your membership pays for shows. That's how it happens. And you get to choose who gets your contribution. We Got This With Mark and Hal is allowed to continue 
because of the generosity and support of members. That's how it works. You set up a recurring monthly contribution. We see a portion of that along with any other shows you choose to support by checking their boxes during the sign-up process. That's right. And if you become a member at $5 a month or more, we know that you're doing a great thing for the people of the world and the Maximum Fund community. But... If that ain't enough for you, we got some incentives. At $5 a month, you're going to get bonus content from every show. We know that your love for the Max Fund community and your desire to support all the great podcasts on this network are what are driving you to become members. But for those of you who need a little extra sweetener, guess what? At $5 a month, you will get access to the entire library of bonus content. That's right. Every bit of bonus content that we got this with Mark and Hal has ever made, but also Every show on the Max Fun Network's bonus content, you're going to get all of it. You may have even heard some bonus content directly in our feed. We got some really fun stuff planned for you. We've got one this year. Hal and I drove around to determine once and for all the best fast food burger. The answer will surprise you. You know what else the answer will do? Give us tummy aches. It was a long day in the car, but we recorded in the car, and that's why we did it. It was for the Max Fund Drive for all of the members out there who are giving their support to our show and all the shows on the Max Fund Network. Now, if you join at the $10 a month level, not only do you get all of the bonus content, but you also get to pick your favorite of the pins that have been released for all of the Maximum Fun shows. Now, I know I have a personal favorite, and I think we can object objectively say, since that's what we do on this show, that the best Max Fun Drive 2024 pin is the We Got This with Mark and Hal pin, which of course says podcasts should have a pin. If you know, you know. That's at the $10 a month level. Those are the gifts we've got for you, but the real gift is supporting the Max Fun community. And I know what you're asking right now. Hey, what are your goals this year? I'm so glad you asked, person of the world. At 50 new upgrading or boosting members, hey, remember last year when we had our hot sauce challenge clean slate episode? You heard that episode, but you never saw it. You want to see Hal's eyes water as he eats 10 of the hottest hot sauces ever? Get us to 50 new upgrading or boosting members, and we're going to release the video. At 150 new upgrading and boosting members, we're going to do a new mystery guest episode. We did it last time. We had a blast. I'm not going to tell you who that mystery guest was, because maybe you haven't heard that episode yet. But we're going to drop a new one if we hit 150. If we hit 250 new upgrading or boosting members, hey, people of the world, you tell us that you can beat us at trivia, guess what? We're throwing down with the people of the world trivia competition. It's us versus you duking it out. And of course, there'll be stretch goals. Of course, there'll be stretch goals. But let's get to 250 first, and then we'll reveal even more goodies. Please become a member today. Go to MaximumFun.org slash join, friendos, to either join for the first time or upgrade or boost your membership. You can upgrade, move up a level, or if you don't have enough money to move up a level, you can boost and just throw a few dollars more in. Those are also great opportunities to check the boxes and keep your listening preferences updated. So there may be new shows that you started listening to that you're not supporting yet. This is your chance to do that. And it's important to do it now while you're thinking about it. If you take the amount of money that you spend on a cup of coffee every day and just took one of those and instead supported art and artists whose work that you enjoy for free every single week, that's a pretty good deal for you and for us. We really appreciate it. MaximumFun.org slash join is the place to go. Join monthly at just $5 a month or more, whatever you are comfortable with and very important. Don't forget to check that box for We Got This with Mark and Hal. And people of the world, this is the last week of the Max Fun Drive. So this is your last opportunity right now to become a member, get all of the bonus content, get the pin, and support We Got This with Mark and Hal for the next year. To those who have already done it, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you enough for all of the support you've given us. You're the reason we're able to continue to do this show. And for those of you out there who have yet to join and would like to, visit MaximumFun.org slash join. And don't forget, again, to click that button that says, we got this with Mark and Hal. That will make sure that your support goes where you want it to go. One more time, that's MaximumFun.org slash join. And now, back to the show. All right. right. As we're coming back, I want to throw in one more guilty pleasure movie from when I was a kid. And... 
my favorite line from that movie because I felt like it was just talking to me. Okay. And that is, of course, this is how charismatic Kurt Russell is. <laughs> he can make a movie with Martin Short and Martin Short is the straight man. <laughs> If you are so charismatic that you can make a movie with Martin Short and Martin Short is playing it straight to yeah. your Captain Ron. Oh, yeah. I loved Captain Ron. That was one that I watched the way, Adam, you watched Overboard over and yeah. over as a kid. I watched Captain Ron over this and was over. It in the and mix for again. me, too, for sure. It was yeah. uh, so fun. It's yeah. him just playing bumbling, this charismatic bumbling uh, boat captain. And then Ben Salisbury in it, who incidentally was my boss years later at Universal Studios, which was very <laughs> odd to go revisit this and go, oh, yeah, I forgot he was a child actor. But the line that I remember was, he says, we got to watch out for pirates. Pirates? Yeah, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. You've been to Disney World one too many times, Ron? Nah, I've been to Dollywood, though. <laughs> and I was like, that is the greatest exchange <laughs> uh... in any movie ever. I was so excited about that. That character's so lived in. Like, yeah. if you've ever been on vacation to anywhere warm, like, you will encounter <laughs> Captain Ron. Yes, yes, 100%. That guy is all over the panhandle of Florida. Absolutely, yeah. Him and Pink Eye. That's what the panhandle of Florida has. <laughs> Why, Mark? What? what, is, what I don't want to talk mean? about it. I don't want to talk not. about the fact that I just got back from the panhandle of Florida Mark? with a case of Pink Eye. Did you sleep on a fart pillow? Be honest. Hmm. Um, I did. You would know. That would yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, when you lay your head down on a fart pillow, there's no mistaking it. It's, man, you're in I it, always man. bring my own pillowcases to an Airbnb. Does that make me weird? No, no. you don't have that pink makes you eye. Smart. I want to be sure. Yeah. I want to be sure I'm not sleeping on a fart pillow. <laughs> it's really, yeah, that's, I've brilliant. left a lot of pillowcases behind in my lifetime. <laughs> I've realized now from you saying that how long I've been dancing between raindrops everywhere I go to stay that is not my home. It's a dangerous I mean, play in hell. Yeah, dancing really between dangerous. raindrops. I've never heard that phrase before. Here, you want a dangerous game? I'll give you a dangerous game. Imagine you work for the government and your yeah. job is to, uh, you're basically a CIA analyst and you've mm -hmm. been tracking this known terrorist. You know more about him than anybody in the world, but you're a yeah. pencil pusher. Sure. Turns out you have a chance to... uh this terrorist takes control of a plane that has uh, a few important people on it, but you know, he's uh, has commandeered this plane and you are part of uh, sort of putting together the plan. We're going to take this sort of like Black Hawk jet that can't be detected. We're going to attach to refuel because the plane needs to be refueled mm -hmm. or it's something that's able to refuel. We're going to send a SEAL team inside or Marine. I can't forget whether there's SEALs or Marines. We're going to send them inside, uh, he, and you have to go with the them. They just told the SEALs that this is in water, so that's how you got them yeah. to go along with this. And he's the only one who knows what the guy looks like. Yeah. So they're going to put cameras in to try and find him. Then it all goes awry, and you wind up on the plane. I think Executive Decision is a – I have a movie that's even more slept on than this. I think this is a great movie. It's from 1996. And maybe the best part of it is that they sold it as like a Kurt Russell and Steven Seagal movie. And yeah, nobody yep. wanted to see Steven Seagal in anything anymore. He had his shot with Under Siege and then that's it. And he dies within the first 20 minutes. He is that gone. is the thing I remember most about this movie yeah. is going, did they just kill off the guy on the poster? When yeah. that happened, that was like seeing the usual suspects for the first mm -hmm. time. Like, you see that moment that early in the movie, anything is possible in any movie yep. afterwards. Yeah, it's yeah. the Janet Lee effect. Yeah, yeah, yep. It is. As he died so bad, too. Like, as yes. I recall, it was the umbilical between planes that kind of separated, and out yes. he goes. Like, it's so undignified. Yeah. He doesn't get cut down in a hail of bullets or anything. He <laughs> just like, dropped. He's not standing there while Elvis's My Way plays, and he has lasers yeah. on him. Incredible. What yeah. a moment. I'm not going to lie, though. Guy. I don't remember much of the rest of that movie. It's good. It's another good, like another thing about him is, especially in all these movies, he's going to have really good actors around him. He's got John mm -hmm. Leguizamo. Halle mm -hmm. Berry is in this movie, uh, as is BD Wong. David Suchet. We got is a the whip main up, terrorist. Yeah. Yeah. You got like an incredible cast. Um, the guy who plays the inventor of the chip from Terminator, from Terminator 2. Joe Morton. Yes. Yes. He's the bomb. Yeah, he paper ventilates before uh, dropping his hand on the bomb that explodes in his office building. That yes. Guy? 
Yes, that guy. <laughs> he's the bomb expert and he gets injured immediately and he's stabilized. So he has to guide someone in how to take the bomb apart. He's like looking with a mirror. It's crazy. A really fun movie. It's not, I don't think it's going to win. Mm. I want to throw one of these ones that you've got on your list out here as a movie that is another one that's easy to sleep on that I think is a great Kurt Russell performance because I think to my experience of him, he's such a larger than life person. His hair is spectacular. His performances are spectacular. Throw it out there, Mark. I think that he is brilliant as an everyman in Breakdown. That's right. Oh, that movie. Because it's one of those... That movie is, I remember, I saw that movie in the theater, and it, that movie is terrifying because yeah, uh-huh. you are with him the whole time. Just when JT Walsh is just playing dumb, like, who are you talking about? I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. It is, for those who don't know the movie Breakdown, how, how would you describe it in a sentence? Breakdown is about a couple played by Kurt Russell and Kathleen Quinlan who are driving mm-hmm. across country, I think for a job. They don't have a, they have all their money in the world, which is like $10,000. They break down. And mm-hmm. a trucker played by J.T. Walsh kind of offers to help them, winds up kidnapping Kathleen Quinlan. Mm-hmm. And Kurt Russell's the only one who sees it. And he's left to try to piece together where oh. his wife is and what's happened and finds out she's being held for ransom. And she's told them how much money they have. And it's more than the actual amount. So he has to remember that, like, just every – it's one of those where maybe in writing it, you just start at the very end like you're building a good mystery. You work your mm-hmm. way backwards. As a linear path for a movie, I think it makes total sense how you get from A to B to C all the way to mm-hmm. Z. And you bring up – what's great about this movie is he's in khakis at a button-down, like, polo T-shirt yeah. the whole time. He looks like – he's dressed like Clark Griswold in the original Vacation, and he has to – a guy who's – he's like in a panic the whole time mm-hmm. to try to get people to help him, to try to convince them that J.T. Walsh's character is a bad – it's J.T. Walsh. Who and is I think who is his last film role. Yeah. Just, it's one of those movies. It's oh. just like – it feels like it's one of those – this is terrifying because it could happen to anyone. It's like that movie yeah. The Strangers. Why would you pick us? Because you were home. It's just mm-hmm. your car broke down and your car breaking down can lead to this – harrowing experience the restraint of breakdown i think is what i appreciate the most Mm -hmm. like joyride was in the same section of the genre but Mm -hmm. joyride showed so much yeah way like a huge part of the horror of what breakdown did so well like the mystery of your wife being gone and yeah yeah i loved it what a great film it's so good to see him at a like he's at an emotional 10 the whole time but Mm -hmm. like a good I think the the instinct somebody who is maybe less seasoned or still learning acting or or really getting into it is they'll play ten the same way the whole time. But any of those numbers have a ton of shades of what it is to be panicked or upset or determined. And he hits all of them so that it feels it hits all these different notes, even though he's heightened. And and you bring up a great point. It has that Jaws effect of you never you don't know what's going on. You don't know yeah. if she's alive or dead. And you don't know if anybody's going to believe, like it could have just as easily ended with she's gone and he gets killed and you would believe that too. So mm-hmm. it, and it's satisfying and that makes it so much more satisfying when you get to the end. I love this movie so much and I think it's maybe the most slept on film in his body of work because the other stuff is so showy. Jack yeah. Burton's a very showy role in a big, hard to forget movie. Uh, Escape from L.A. is iconic. Even Miracles about something that we all know, this big like cultural moment for America. Mm-hmm. But this is a small story, stays contained within itself, and is thrilling. Like You're invested in the characters so that when she's taken, you care. Mm-hmm. And then following him on the journey is just – it's. I'm sitting here thinking, I, I need to watch this again tonight. It's yeah, it's a been a long movie. time, but I remember loving it. Yeah. I want to shift gears a little bit. You mentioned mm-hmm. that this is one of his smaller, more subdued performances. And in the career of a guy who's, I mean, he played Ego in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. This yeah. guy gobbles up scenery. He's yeah. great at it. He's one of my favorite scenery gobblers of all time. And always with that signature smirk on his face that kind of lovable bad boy image. And I think there's a movie on this list that to me was such a fun way to take that character and flip it on its head. And that is his performance as stuntman Mike in Death Proof, where 
he is that charming guy at the bar. He's the grizzled older version of that super charming. They might as well have just called the character Kurt Russell because he's just playing charming Kurt Russell. But then he's got this menace streak to him and his whole opening scene and monologue in the bar. And then once they're in the car and you find out, you you know, he has this turn, this sort of heel turn where he's yeah. this bad guy. It's so fun. What do you guys think? Are you guys Death Proof fans? I always preferred Planet Terror to Death Proof. Really? Yeah. In yeah. the grindhouse combo. Just the genre? It's an opinion I can barely support. I don't know. It, it just, <laughs> no. it just, it's a, it's a bigger, flashier movie. Yeah. Like there's a woman with a machine gun for a leg. I mean, True. come yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's all it took. Yeah. <laughs> you just needed, a, if only, uh, Kurt Russell Crowe had a uh, machine gun for a leg. The Jeff Fahey character in Grindhouse is in Planetary is what kills me every time. Like, <laughs> Uh, it's pretty him. spectacular. Yeah. I mean, Grindhouse as an experience, and mm. I, they have, I don't know why. There must be a rights thing, as I'm shocked Tarantino, maybe he does, like screening it exactly how it's meant to be done at New Beverly. Yeah. Is his, the movie house that he's bought and shows Grindhouse pictures in. The, the experience of it is fantastic. And after Planet Terror, which is so cranked up and high octane, mm-hmm. his is such a counter to that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a pretty small story. It's a small story. It's really well written. It's got a hilariously shocking ending Mm -hmm. in that you don't expect the credits to roll, yet they do. And it's a really good performance. I don't think it's as bad. I'll dock it points because it led to Hateful Eight being made with him. Fair. A rare misstep. I didn't care for that movie. I thought it was a little bit too – first of all, he shot it in like whatever, 8 million millimeter. And Uh the only real (laughs) shot you get to see the outside is in the first like 30 seconds. And then it's all in one room. Yeah. Why don't we, here's an idea. Why don't we shoot a movie in Epcot's circle vision 360 and set it in a cabin? Right. Like (laughs) what is, what are you doing, man? Yeah. I loved that though. I love death proof. Did you think that that would kick off a whole, uh, like a brand new era of grindhouse type of films? Like, I guess we got a hobo with a shotgun out of that. But yeah, like, we got a machete it, out of that. Yeah, but like, I know I'm forgetting a few, but like, that didn't really kickstart a new Grindhouse era, did it? You know what? I think if it did launch a house, uh, I think a, it a launched Blumhouse? a Blumhouse. Yeah, maybe it did. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Blumhouse is one of those really fun movie studios that makes what are essentially, as you mentioned before, Hal, essentially B movies by the right. way you can describe them. It's like, okay, it's uh, Happy Death Day. Well, you can, I can know what that movie is about by the title. Uh, right. truth or dare revenge Great. every christmas that's that's a a nostalgia play for me i love it. <laughs> it revenge yeah i don't know revenge treevenge is oh treevenge yeah i don't know treevenge the guy who directed hobo with a shotgun mm-hmm. directed a short film called treevenge where the trees that are cut down for christmas decorations get their revenge mm-hmm. within the homes that they're decorated why have I not seen this? Using their decorations, like the star wow. is like a throwing star. Of course and you it can is. Hear them, like the trees are making sounds and they're they're yeah. in terror when they're taken from these tree farms. Incredible watch. You've got to see it. Sounds All right. amazing. I'm ready for tree venge. Yeah, I mean B movies exist. Like we don't have grindhouse theaters anymore, really. Yeah. I think that's part of the thing. Like they don't yeah. really get you see them go direct to streaming or mm-hmm. they show up on cable. I, they're definitely there. I think that they were already sort of dabbling in that. You could argue that the Robert Rodriguez Il Mariachi trilogy mm-hmm. is B movie. From Dust mm-hmm. Till Dawn is a hundred percent a B movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like they're too mainstream, especially by Time yeah. Made from Dust Till Dawn and Grindhouse. This is them like going, these are the movies that we love and we're going to make our versions of them and you're going to sit in a theater and watch for full price the yeah. whole thing and not complain. It's so, weird how, like, the modern B movie that's, like, direct to streaming or whatever is just a bad movie. Yeah. 
That's what the B stands for now. But but like the the redeeming <laughs> quality is the joy that you feel when you watch a B movie of the mid 2000s, like the Grindhouse, mm-hmm. the Grindhouse Nouveau era. Like mm-hmm. all of the joy of those films is gone now in the streaming machine. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty saturated. Yeah, that's right. Just watch the Asylum movies. I mean, I just don't watch Asylum movies. Those aren't even B. Those are Z. Maybe it's an exposure bias. Like I'm just yeah. not watching as much as I should. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're avoiding them. Yeah. Watch more B movies. Yeah. All right, we got to start whittling this down, guys. We haven't talked about Christmas Chronicles yet. Uh, now, I am an avowed, in addition to being a Kurt Russell fan, Adam, I'm also mm-hmm. a huge fan of Christmas. Like many Jewish people, I like the oh, pretty yeah. lights, uh-huh. all the music that we wrote for it, and the movies are a pleasure. Everything from Hallmark all the way up to. I'm going to take back my recommendation for Treevenge. Don't. It's going to change oh, your feelings no. about. No, I must watch. I remember a short film from. It had to be like 88, somewhere between 1980 and 1983, where all of the video games, like including Space Invaders, come out of the television and terrorize children. And it's, I can't find it. I don't know the name of it. If anybody else. Wasn't that an Adam Sandler movie? No, that, no. I auditioned to be. Yeah, where they, they, uh, thank you very much. Did not get cast. They have carnal relations with (laughs) Qbert. Carnal relations with Qbert. I mean, uh, have you seen that snoot he's got? Yeah. Qbert and Dig Dug have a moment. Oh you do a God. lot with that. Yeah. yeah. But look, once you, if you spend too much time at Tapper, anything can happen <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Not the root beer version. Then you just have to go to pee. Root beer version. But as someone who loves Christmas movies and someone mm-hmm. who loves Kurt Russell, I was kind of nervous to watch the Christmas Chronicles because you look at the post and you go like, how is yeah, this? It looks bad. How could this possibly work? And then the story is very touching and he's a fantastic Santa Claus, like yeah. slightly different. A cooler, a more rizzed up Santa Claus than mm. we've seen in anything else. This guy's also, all riz. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, rivals the thing in terms of hair. I think you, yes. you did yeah. it before. Like, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And it goes yeah. all, like in the thing, it goes all the way around. Yeah. 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 It's front and back hair. The caricature end. of Kenny Rogers back in the day is, mm-hmm. yeah. is Kurt Russell's Santa Claus in this film. <laughs> Uh, well, we've talked about all the movies on the list from Hal. We've talked about the additions that we've added to it. Big Trouble in Little China and 3000 Miles to Graceland, obviously. Yeah. yeah. We've talked about a lot of Kurt Russell movies. And again, are we going with best Kurt Russell performance or which is the best movie out of these? I mean, I think the ones that are contenders, they're great movies in which he is great. So, that, well, that so what do we think separate. of the big, I think, well, I mean, the- yeah. I think One you're of the right. ways I, I think about this is like when you imagine, sadly, mm-hmm. his future in memorial reel at the Academy Awards, yeah. what's mm-hmm. the clip they show? What is the most representative film? Yeah. Like, what are they going to pull from for that, do you think? Stargate. <laughs> the brush cut. Uh. Stargate and Winter People. You know what? We didn't talk about anti-hair movies. Like, for some reason, you cast a Kurt Russell and you give him, like, a number four guard on the top and a two on the sides. And Yeah. What are you doing? Wait, when has he ever had shorn hair in a movie? Stargate. Oh, in Stargate, yeah. For me, to answer your question, Adam, what I think is, to my mind, I would think that the roles, the Kurt Russell that's going to show up in the In Memoriam, I think it might be Snake Plissken. I would like it to be Jack Burton. Yeah. I would like it to be Big Trouble in Little China because that's the best version of Kurt, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He'll get two, though. They'll show, like, because, you know, some people get multiple clips. Mm -hmm. He'll get both. He would get both. Do you think think. he gets the gavel, the last one? Oh, is that called the gavel, the final one of the year? Yeah. Yeah. I think he's the gavel. I mean, it depends on who else goes that year. Guys, this is a very sad conversation. Sadly. Yeah. He's not going anytime soon. He's not going anywhere. He'll be here forever. He'll be here forever through his movies. That's right. I think you can sense his wellness based on the volume of his hair. He seems oh, yeah. like a healthy individual. A He's ton, got so many more Christmas Chronicles movies in him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My vote goes to Big Trouble in Little China purely for the joy that it brings me and because I think it is peak Kurt Russell. If you were to play the character of Kurt Russell, the SNL impression of Kurt Russell would be of Jack Burton, I think. I would say, and I would offer, that is mm-hmm. a fine choice and a wonderful choice, but I think Breakdown is such a good movie mm-hmm. and such a great performance that nobody talks about that I want to throw it up there, number one, because I think it could be valid as a winner, but mm-hmm. number two, because I hope people will watch it. 
I feel like not enough people saw it. It was a moderately successful movie. Adam, do one of our choices cover what you think is the best, or is there a third one you want to throw out there? I want to throw a third one out there, a film that we have not mentioned, which I think should be a scandal for those who enjoy this show. How could we not have evoked the title Backdraft at any point? Oh my gosh, we didn't mention yeah. Backdraft. A film that I love, a totally rewatchable, like when DVDs first came out, yeah. like you sure. have Backdraft, watch sure. Backdraft all the time in college. One of the great rewatchable films mm-hmm. and a great character. A great character, a great film, too much of an ensemble film. I is agree. It, is it a Kurt Russell movie? He doesn't take it over. You're right. I think yeah. it's a Scott Glenn movie. If I'm yeah. thinking of like my favorite performances in that, I think it's a. But Ron I Howard absolutely movie. agree that it's a great. That's true. It is a very Ron I think Howard. It's a Ron movie. Howard movie. Yeah, you could also argue that Donald Universal Sutherland attraction. took that movie over in, yes, yeah. in a true. scene that only lasted a minute. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> but he fun. belongs there. Like Kurt Russell belongs with heavy hitters like that, which is mm-hmm. a testament yeah. to him. Yeah, that's a curtastically Russellicious movie. I think yeah. so. It belongs. It belongs. And I'm glad that you brought it up. Agreed. All right. So you then couldn't the, do a then, show about him without mentioning that's it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I didn't have it on my list, but that's why I, I didn't want to like, look, I love the movie Sky High, but he's only in it as a supporting character. He's <laughs> yeah. fantastic in it, along with Kelly Preston. That whole mm. cast is, again, insane. A lot of people, a lot of the kids like went on to Cousin Greg is in that. Really? The, yeah. The kid who makes flames. That's the big great. awkward kid with the bleach blonde hair is, is uh, Nicholas, um, whatever his last name is. Extremely talented guy. Okay, so if, if the three finalists are Big Trouble in Little China, Breakdown, and Backdraft, mm-hmm. is there a clear winner out of those three? To me, there is, but I'm yeah. the one that put mine forward. So I think so too. Yeah, I think I think mine is a distant third compared to your two. The film I'm most excited about rewatching after mm-hmm. this recording session is Breakdown. Yeah. Ooh. Like, yeah. The warm feelings I have for that film, the fact that I haven't seen it in 20 years, like, I want to go back to that more than Big Trouble in China, even though Big Trouble in Little China is many people's favorite film. Yeah. Kurt Russell or not, people love that movie. Mm -hmm. That's true. Where is that on in your, like, on your Mount movie more, Mark? Like, is that like. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not. I mean, it's a great movie. It's a lot of again. I didn't rewatch it until my adulthood and really get an appreciation for it yeah. until I was an adult. But it is pure popcorn fun. That's yeah. I think that's kind of what we're deciding right now is pure popcorn fun. Kurt Russell or arguably his best performance. Breakdown isn't fun. Breakdown is not it's a not fun, fun movie. No. It's tense. It's a te- it's really good, but it's an it's a tense movie. I would argue that Kurt Russell, his mythology is based in fun. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that Big Trouble in Little China accentuates that element of him, even though it is an incredible performance in Breakdown. And that gets me back to the question, is it best Kurt Russell performance or best Kurt Russell movie? I gotta tell you, I think much as I love Breakdown, and I, mm-hmm. I think I've accomplished my goal, which is to get people who listen to this to check it out. So I'll consider Please watch mission. Breakdown. It feels like it would be a grand disservice to choose anything but Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. We got this as a Breakdown Stan account. I think everyone recognized Correct. that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. We stand a Breakdown. Yeah, we do. I think it's Big Trouble in Little China. Do we agree? I'm good with it. Yeah, let's enshrine it. All right, people of the world, if you have green eyes, be careful. If you're a lady with green eyes, don't become a wizard's bride. You don't want to do that. That's not, you know, they'll kidnap you. They'll kidnap you right away. You'll become the bride and then you can live forever or come back or whatever. Stay away from Lopan. I used to, I used to do the, the magic with a, a friend of mine in math class. He would hold the jewel and I would do the cross pinkies and we would fire magic at each other. That's why I was bad at math, but I'm real good at picking Kurt Russell movies. That is why we have selected. Big Trouble in Little China is the best Kurt Russell movie. You might have known it from the beginning, but now you know for sure, asked and answered. And one other thing you know for sure is that it is currently the Max Fun Drive. Yes. One last time, this is Max Fun Drive 2024. You have till end of day on Friday, the 29th of March, this coming Friday, to support 
the art and artists you enjoy at MaximumFun.org slash join. If you've never been a Max Fun member, you can try it out at just $5 a month and enjoy great bonus content. And if you're already a member and you'd like to support a little more, we would certainly appreciate you upgrading your membership or even boosting it by a few dollars per month or so. Please do it now while you're thinking of it. We don't want you to forget. That's right. Don't forget to join MaximumFun.org slash join. We have special thank you gifts you can check out when you head to MaximumFun.org slash join. That is bonus content for all the shows at the $5 level. That's our awesome pin at the $10 level. And you can get these if you become a member or boost or upgrade. And you can get these if you join or upgrade your membership today at MaximumFun.org slash join. Don't forget to click that box that says, We Got This with Mark and Hal. And to those who have already become members, thank you. We couldn't do the show without you. The thing inspired this entire conversation, and yet, like, such is Kurt Russell's entire career. Like, yeah. what a legend. Yeah. Absolutely. This is the most I've ever thought about Kurt Russell, and I'm so glad that we did this. Yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for this. Adam, thank you for the suggestion, the hair. The thing is, is his best hair. I'm going right to keep in closer touch with you guys. I love doing this show. I love talking. Yeah, please. We're doing so like, fun. We great. should just get lunch sometime. It doesn't yeah. have to be for a podcast. Yeah. We, we're in the same city. You don't have to monetize our friendship. Let's we don't. Just, let's have a good time talking about movies off mic. Amen. But speaking, of, speaking of monetizing, if you're going to support We Got This with Mark and Hal, you should also support The Greatest Generation, The Greatest Trek. Adam, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I, I love this show. So fun. Well, we love Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy. We love you back. It's so fun to have you. You're an absolute blast. And yes, to reiterate what Hal said, please go listen to Greatest Trek and Greatest Generation. And we got this with Mark and Hal and support them on Max Fun as a member, MaximumFun.org slash join. Thank you for this topic. This topic is close. We can say to the person who suggested yes. it. Thank you. Uh, let me look at my notes. Adam Pranica. That's me. For this topic. This topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us via email at we got this podcast at gmail.com or share your love of all things curtastically russellicious at facebook.com <laughs> slash groups slash we got this podcast. I don't want to ever stop seeing gifts of Kurt Russell there. I will watch them all and thumbs up each one that I see. You can also find us on TikTok at we got this podcast and on Instagram at we got this show. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thank you, the people of the world, for, as you have done for so many seasons of Max Fun Drives and years of this show, given us an opportunity to sit down with our buddies and talk about stuff that we think is fun and hilarious and interesting and cool and things that we can add to your collection of movies if we can. And you are the happiest place on the internet, the most fun argument anywhere. And for that, you are responsible. So to you, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. Don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows supported directly by you.